Hey guys, today we're gonna do my top five camera settings for astrophotography. I've got the Canon EOS RA here to show you guys today. Whatever camera you have, these settings will work. Setting number one is aperture. Pretty much across the board, whatever you are shooting, whether it's wide field Milky Way stuff or deep space images, you are gonna want your aperture set to wide open, which is the lowest number or the largest opening in the lens. That lets the most amount of light through and allows us to use a lower ISO, which we'll get to in a minute. The way to adjust this is by spinning one of the dials on your camera until the aperture adjusts and you're going to want to put that number as low as possible. In this case, I'm going to put my camera on f1.4 because that's the lowest number and the largest aperture that this specific lens can use. Pro tip, you want to get a lens if you don't have one that can go to a very low number. Again, lower the number, the more light you're going to let in, which is going to result in a better astrophoto down the line. Tip number two is shutter speed, and this one's super important. If you're trying to make your stars stay perfectly round and you're not going for trailed stars, you're gonna need to make sure that your shutter speed follows the 400 rule. The 400 rule states that you take 400 divided by the focal length of your lens, and the result is the longest shutter speed in seconds that you should use in order to ensure pinpoint stars. Now, even the 400 rule can still result in some trails in some cases, so the best way to do this is actually to use a tracker, which will allow you to use a 30 or 60 second shutter speed, which again will help you reduce that ISO and get an even better picture. I made a video on a lot of different tracking options and I'll link those down in the description so you guys can check those out if you want to take your Milky Way and astrophotography to the next level. Setting number three is ISO, and this one is kind of variable. It depends on the previous two things that we just set. I recommend starting your ISO at 3200, taking a test exposure, and looking at the histogram. The histogram can be used to identify how bright or dark the resulting image is. What you want to look for is a histogram with the bulk of the information about a fifth of the way across. I'll put an example on the screen right now. Any darker than this, the information will be slid to the left, and it might be touching the left-hand side, which means that we're clipping or losing information in our dark shadows. We don't want that. We also don't want the bulk of the information to be towards the middle because that means our sky is too bright and we're going to not have as good of contrast in our image as we're looking for. Camera setting number four is long exposure noise reduction or LENR. If you are not stacking and you are looking for a one shot good Milky Way image or deep sky image, you're going to want to turn on long exposure noise reduction. What this will do is the camera will take a second exposure right after the first and it will use that to reduce the noise in the original image. This does tie up your camera for twice the amount of time for each image, but it can reduce a lot of noise in your final shot. Setting number five, and this is probably the most important one, shoot raw. If you've been shooting JPEG in the past, this is a good time to switch over to raw on your camera. Raw is going to pick up so much more information than JPEG is, and it's really going to allow you in your editing software to pull out the minute details of the Milky Way or other object without having that much trouble. JPEG, on the other hand, limits your editing ability a lot and restricts you to doing very minor tweaks after the fact. So make sure you set your camera to RAW when you're doing Astro. I wanna throw one bonus setting in here because I just thought of it and I think it's really important. We also wanna set our camera to manual focus or our lens to manual focus. There are very few, if any, cameras that can accurately autofocus on a star without very specialized software. So we wanna go to manual focus so that our lens isn't hunting for focus on a star that it's not even capable of focusing on anyway. Manual focus, set the lens to infinity, preferably go on live view, zoom in on a star or the moon or something that you have in your shot and get that focus perfect. What you're looking for is for your stars to be as small as possible. And as you turn that focus ring on live view and preferably you're zoomed in, you're going to see the stars change from little donut shapes in many cases or big bloated stars to nice and little pointy stars. And you want the smallest star you can get. That's a good indicator that you're nice and sharp. Hope you guys like these camera settings. Definitely hit that like button if you did. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys have a question, comment, concern, whatever it is, leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, we post videos every single week, so you guys should definitely subscribe to our channel down there or up there to stay up to date with future videos. Hit that bell icon down there to get notified whenever we post. Catch you guys in the next one and clear skies.